Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about simple exponential smoothing or SES. So exponential smoothing models are a simple class of a bigger class of models, which is called the state space models. And state space models say that we have a hidden variable, which we don't observe, which is the state. Okay, so we can denote it, let's say by X and the state at time T comes from some process or distributes according to some distribution that only depends on the previous states, okay? And the observation, the thing that we actually observe, denoted here by Y, so the observation at time T, it comes from a distribution that only depends on the state, on the current state at time T. So there's like this distinction between the true um, state and what we observe, let's say a measurement of the state that we have. And so one type of state space model is called linear state space. And for example, we can have that uh, y is equal to some scalar or some vector times um, the state. This doesn't have to be um, a scalar. It can also be a vector. But let's suppose it's a scalar. So it's a times x plus b times plus b times the noise, which distributes normal uh, with a constant variance. And the state is equal to some C, some other parameter, times the previous state, plus some other noise. Okay, so this is just an example of a state space models. These are a bit more complex. We will deal with them in the future. Uh, for now, we are talking about exponential smoothing, which is a simpler set of models in the state space models. And we are talking in this video about the simple exponential smoothing, which is the simplest of the exponential smoothing models. So let's get some intuition about it. So one way to think about it is that in the naive forecasting method, we gave the last observation all the weight. We basically took one times the last observation and then gave zero for all the previous observation in our training data, in the data that we had. In the mean method, we gave equal weights, so one over T, to all the different observations in our training data. So this is what we had in the mean. So we can look at SES as a compromise between the two. We don't wanna give all the weight to the last observation. We also don't want the weight to be equal. We want to give the most weight to the last observation and then a little bit less weight to the previous observation and a little bit less weight to the observation before that, et cetera, et cetera. And this is done like this with some parameter alpha Setting alpha equal to one brings us back to the naive method. And the closer it is to one, the more weight is on the last observations. And the closer it is to zero, the more spread out the weight is. Yeah, and this can be written in two forms. So one form is called the weighted average. So the forecast at time capital T plus one is equal to alpha times the last known observation plus one minus alpha times the last prediction. Okay, so suppose we start uh, the forecast with some value, which we'll have to estimate, we'll call it L0. So the forecast for the next value will be alpha times the previous value plus one minus alpha times this thing. And I'm using uh, forecast, but this is also the model. So this is the model that we assume as we will see uh, soon the underlying math model. Okay, and so this is also, we continue also to Y3. And then eventually at yt plus one, we get this thing over here. And notice this is almost exactly what I mentioned here, only there's an extra term here, which exponentially decays to zero. So if t, if capital T is very large, this thing is almost nothing. Okay, so this is one way to write this. A more state space way of writing this is to say, well, the model at or the forecast at time t plus one is just equal to um, the state or the level at time t. And the level at time capital T is equal to alpha times uh, yt plus one minus alpha times the level at time uh, t minus one. Here it should be capital T. And notice that this is equivalent. Uh, we just have to replace this thing over here with this thing and we get exactly the weighted average form. So what is the property of the simple exponential smoothing? Well, the model or the forecast will be flat. This means that 
once we forecast a certain value, it will stay like this. Uh, it doesn't matter how many uh, time steps into the future. So notice that for the forecast at t plus two, we don't have any more y, the true y t plus one. So all we can use is the forecast y t plus one. So if we use that, we get that this is what we have, but this and this are the same and we have alpha plus one minus alpha, so it's just one. So it's just equal to the previous forecast. So, and the previous forecast was equal to this. So the forecast even h time steps ahead will still be the same. And so what it means, it means that this method is suitable uh, for forecasting data with no clear trend or seasonal patterns. <clears throat> If there's a trend or a seasonal pattern, we'll have to use another model, uh, which we will discuss in the next video. OK, and I want to give some more theory. So the underlying math of this model is that for any time step, not just for the forecast, yeah, the true value is equal to some state value. Yeah, Here I denoted it by L uh, to go with the online book forecasting principles and practice third edition. But this is actually the state, so it, I could have also used x or some other letter to denote it. And so the current the current value, the observed value, is equal to the state value plus some noise, and the state value is equal to the previous state plus alpha times the same noise. So this is the same noise here, and we assume that uh, epsilon is white noise with a mean zero and some constant variance. And so why is this formulation is the same as the previous formulation here? Why is this the same? Well, let's see. So let's take this formulation for some time step t. It doesn't have to be for the capital T. If we take this formulation, we get here. And now, well, lt minus 1, let's take the 1 times that out, and we get this. And, and let's take alpha as the common factor, and we get this thing. But what is this thing? This is exactly y hat for time t. So we get here, but this thing is the residual, right? So y t minus y hat t, it's just the residual. So um, so this is will be our predicted value, right? If we take it to the other side, we get that y minus the predicted value is just equal to the error term. Okay, so we got to this thing over here, and notice this is exactly what is written here. And so we see that this also corresponds to a state space formulation uh, where we use L instead of X and we use AT, BT, and CT as one, DT is alpha. And also, and this is really important, we are saying that this noise and this noise are the same. Yeah, so this noise and this noise are the same. And this is also called a single source of error models. So we see that this corresponds to some state space formulation. Also, I want to show that this is equivalent to an ARIMA model with a 0, 1, 1, basically no autoregression, one differencing and one moving average. And I will talk about ARIMA in a future video. So if you don't understand this, you can skip ahead and maybe come back to it after you watch the ARIMA video in the future. OK, so what is ARIMA 0, 1, 1? It basically says that the difference, so let's, let's write the difference immediately. So yt minus yt minus 1 is equal to an error term plus some parameter times the previous error, previous innovation. OK, so let's see how we get to this formulation from the SES formulation. So the SES formulation, if we take yt minus yt minus 1, well, yt is equal to lt minus 1 plus epsilon t, and yt minus 1 will be equal to lt minus 2 plus epsilon t minus 1. If we subtract them, we get this. OK, and now what lt minus 1 is equal, we'll use this equation it will be equal to lt minus 2 plus alpha epsilon t minus 1. OK, notice that this and this cancels. And we are left with epsilon t from here. And these two terms become this thing over here. So we got that the difference is equal to this. So basically, our parameter theta from before is just equal to alpha minus 1. So how do we find the parameters of this SES model? Well, we have two parameters. We have the initial value, and we have the smoothing parameter. We also have the noise. The noise is estimated, just as uh, mentioned in a previous video. You take the sum of the squared residuals, and then you divide it by the length 
of the vector and you account also for the number of parameters in the model. Okay, so how do you uh, fit the L0 and alpha? Well, you try to minimize some quantity. So for example, maybe you want to minimize the sum of squared error or the mean squared error and basically do least squares. So you take the residuals, the true value minus the fitted values. These will depend on alpha and L0 you, and you try to minimize them. And so there's no closed form for this. Uh, you use some constrained optimization method. Uh, for example, gradient descent, even though it's not constrained, you can also make it constrained. Uh, specifically in R, in the forecast library, they, I think they used an elder mead method. And in Python and stats model uh, library, they are using the LBFGSB method. Okay, and this is one quantity that you can uh, minimize. There's also the maximum likelihood, which you can maximize. Uh, and there's other... Um, quantities which you can minimize or maximize. And you do this and you get uh, basically an estimate for L0 and alpha for our model. And once you have them, you fitted your model and you can create forecasts. Now, besides forecasts, you can also calculate prediction intervals. So what happens for the simple exponential smoothing? Uh, well, here, very similar, very similar to the naive method, you get an accumulation of the errors but here you get a discount accumulation of them. So the model at time step capital T plus one is equal to the state plus this error. Time step two, it's equal to this state plus this error, but this state, we can open it, it's equal to this with the second equation. So we see that we have this innovation plus alpha times this innovation. And if we continue doing this, we will get this and we can open this and we will get this. So we see we have this in the end, after h time steps, we have the state at time t plus alpha times the sum of h minus one um, innovations plus one for the newest innovation. And notice that during all these predictions, the model will forecast the same. The model will forecast the last, the last known state. So the variance is growing and it's growing like this. Okay, so this is the formula for the variance and then to create prediction interval, if we also assume normality, then we just multiply 1.96 times the square root of this to get a 95% prediction interval. Now in R, we will use the forecast library and I will create data using these uh, hyperparameters, L0 and alpha, and also a sigma of one. And I'm generating data using the underlying math model such that the simple exponential smoothing is the exact model for this uh, data. So I'm creating data that is specifically tailored to the simple exponential model. Okay, so I'm creating a vector of observation. I'm creating a vector of hidden states. I'm creating already in advance the vector of innovation. I initiate the initial state to be the L0 and I initiate the initial observation to be the state plus some noise. And here I basically just coded these two equations here. Okay, and I coded them and I go over them to create the data. And this is how the data looks. And to fit the data using a simple exponential smoothing, there's a command in the forecast library called ETS. We have to specify the model is ANN. So an ANN stands for additive error, no trend and no seasonality. So we fit the model, and if we look at the fit, we see that what we got, and we see that the initial state is estimated to be 50.2, very close to 50. The alpha, the smoothing parameter, is estimated to be 0.55, very close to 0.6. The sigma is estimated to be 0.988, very close to 1. So all in all, we see that the fit is quite good. We can also forecast, let's say, 25 steps ahead, and... Yeah, this is the sigma, uh, and we can see that if we calculate it manually, just taking the residuals, uh, squaring them, summing them, and dividing by n minus 2, because we have two parameters in our model, right? We have L0 and alpha, and we have no, and we have no missing values here. So using that, we get the exact same number. So 0 0.988, 0 0.988. And now we can also calculate prediction intervals. We can look at the first time step. This is what 
uh, the manual calculation will be just the sigma hat, just the sigma hat times 1.96. And this is what we get from the forecast. And we see that they are exactly the same. Yeah. And here is what we get for a two-step forecast. Notice that we have to multiply it by this thing, which is exactly uh, this thing over here. So we multiply it by this. And this is what it's calculated in the forecast. Uh, command. And we can see that also here we get exactly or almost exactly the same and also here almost exactly the same. And we can plot this simply casting this to auto plot. We get two prediction intervals, one for 80% and one for 95%. And also we see that we have a flat forecast. Yeah. And so this is how it looks. And this is all for this video. So I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one.